As a safety speaker and a safety professional, it's important to understand how to motivate all levels of any organization. How you talk to management is critical, and you need to be able to talk their language. Listen as I discuss some ways you can make that happen successfully. I want to share with you how, as safety professionals, safety speakers, that you might want to communicate with the management or the leadership of your organization. What I found, the biggest problem in communicating safety to leadership and management is that we're not thinking like them. Remember I said, as a safety speaker, you want to be flexible. As a safety communicator, you want to be flexible. When I'm talking to leadership about safety, how do I want to talk about it? Now, by the way, what do, what do, what do you envision corporate leaders read quite often? What's that? Quantitative charts. Right, okay, but what newspaper would you expect them to re read the most common? Oh, Wall Street, Wall Street. Wall Street Journal, right? How many of you guys read the Wall Street Journal? <laughs> None. Guess what? Okay, they're back there. Good for you. Okay? If you want to communicate with the CEO, you need to be what? Understanding what's important in their world. If you read what's in the Wall Street Journal, what are they talking about? You know, shareholder value, profits, this other thing, right? That's the world they live in. You and I go walking in and talk to them as a safety person. We go and talk to them, and we're not speaking their language. We're not what? Being flexible. And then we understand, why aren't they excited about safety? Let me teach you something here that's very powerful that you can use when you communicate safety to the leadership of your corporation. What you need to do is think like they think. What do corporate executives get excited about? Money. Money. By the way, how many people are in government here? Raise your hand. Okay. So you guys aren't worried about profit, but is money important? Of course it is. The Air Force, you have all the budget you need these days? No, son of a gun. <laughs> You're out of Ellington, right? I mean, is NASA getting all the money it wants to do all the stuff it can do? No. <laughs> right? Nobody has enough money. So if you're in government, you're not talking to the leadership about profits. But I spoke at the Oklahoma, um, state of Oklahoma, the people that handle, uh, people that, that need a public assistance, uh, health stuff, and things like that. Several years ago, I was speaking there. When I spoke to them, I said, you know the reason why you guys want to make sure that your employees are safe? Because every dollar you spend on an injury is a dollar that doesn't go help that person over there that's homeless. It's not helping the person that's trying to get their kid who's sick some health care. It doesn't help the person that's hungry getting food. It's all money going to what? An injury that could have been prevented. At that point, all of a sudden, I got a bunch of people in the room who think safety sucks, right? Because oh, what are they? They want to help people, right? They're thinking like, oh shoot, you know what? And all of a sudden I say to them, hey, every dollar you spend on an injury means you're not helping a person. Now they're paying attention. Now safety is what? Important. Because I've spoken to them about what they care about. What gets them excited? Take the cor corporate side. CEOs are responsible for what? Shareholder profit. If you're an administrator or the, um, a general is in charge of what? A general in the Air Force has got a budget that he's got to make sure he or she has to make happen, and therefore they're going to do what? They're going to go ahead and make sure they get the most out of it. So I can say to them, hey, you know, for every injury we pay for, or every airman that's killed in a motorcycle accident, every airman we lost, how much, you know, I mean, I don't know you know, how much money does it cost us to train somebody in the Air Force? We bring somebody in. Initially $35,000. Okay, and the pilot? It's got to be a whole lot more than that. Easily. And then they go up flying every so often. They're burning fuel and other stuff like that, which is, by the way, the reason they're in it. You talk to any of these guys, they're great. You know, like, I talked to one guy, a colonel at uh, um, one of the training bases where they teach pilots. I said, why, why do you like, you know, what do you like about being in the Air Force? He says, I love moving in three dimensions. That I get to move, with. everybody else gets to, you know, he says, I actually get to move up, down, left, right, or this, he's fabulous. I said, well, that's interesting. I always ask people what gets them excited. And um, so you think in terms of when, when that young airman goes out, gets on the motorcycle, and gets killed by me running into him down here at an intersection because I'm not looking for him, that just costs the Air Force a few hundred thousand dollars, probably. Even if they didn't, and you didn't have to pay anything for the injury. You didn't have to pay any workers' comp, any other stuff like that. Just the mere fact that you've lost this person 
means what? You've spent a lot of money that's now gone. And now you've got to train somebody else because you need that job done. There's, not, there's nobody in here. Is there anybody in here that has more people than they need at their job? No. We all been through downsizing, right? You've got more people doing less work than you've ever had in history. And so therefore, if you lose somebody, you've got to do what? You've got to replace them. So you lose a guy at the Air Force, son of a gun, you've got to replace him. At the EPA, you guys don't have all the budget you want, do you? But you guys don't have the budget you need, right? Yeah, not even close. And what, do you work at the EPA, Does, are, how do you, what gets you excited? I mean, are you, are you one of those people that's excited about the environment, or are you? Uh, yeah, I'm a mix. Um, I'm excited about the environment, but I'm also excited about the safety to protect our employees that are going <coughs> out and protecting the environment. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, so you like both aspects of it. She's working yeah. for an agency, she believes in what they're doing, so that's good. Okay, it certainly allows her to do her job better. And um, so, at the same time, though, you realize that, hey, you know, when somebody gets hurt, that's all the money that you're not being able to do to fix something in the environment. That's money that could be spent doing something to make sure that the environment's better than it is, right? And, and that's significant. By the way, having grown up in Southern California, when I grew up in Southern California, the smog was so bad, you couldn't see some of the mountains around the San Fernando Valley. In fact, when I played football at Cal State Northridge, the only time we didn't practice was if we couldn't see the mountains, which happened occasionally which are not far, if you're in Northridge, you're not very far from the uh, center, whatever the mountains are, just the, that end of the valley. And some days it would get that block. The smog is actually better now in Los Angeles than when I was living in it when I was a lot younger. Um, it's cleaned up a tremendous amount because people did stuff to what? To change that. But once again, you don't have enough money for that, and the more injuries you have, the less you have going to it. So that's the government side. The, the profit side. How many of you have ever talked to management about how many dollars you saved them last year? because of fewer injuries, right? Okay, stop that. <laughs> How's that? You didn't expect that answer, did you? I, as, as a safety professional, I don't want you to talk about saving the company money. I want you to change one little word. I want to change to making the company money, all right? Um, how many of you had an improvement? That, that, Linda, did you have an improvement in your safety performance that actually produced less, you spent less money on safety than you did the year before? Is that what you're talking about, or um, have you ever had that situation occur? Well, I'll yeah, use an illustration. Sorry, there was a person I was meeting with, and what they had was in one year their safety team had caused the cost of safety incidents to the, it went down five hundred thousand dollars, either between workers' comp, what they were paying for their their net cost that they had to lay out was five hundred thousand dollars less, mm -hmm. and they were saying to the corporate leadership, they'd say, "Hey, listen, we we saved you five hundred thousand dollars last year." No, you didn't. You made the company five hundred thousand dollars last year. That's because if it's not an expense, what is it? It's profit, right? Go at, if you guys are in any kind of corporation that has a sales team, go to the sales team. Find out how if you if you save the if, if if there was less money that you spent on safety last year than the previous year uh, on injuries, right? Either workers' comp or the actual injury cost. If you did better. Go to your sales team and say to them, I could have the guy with that company that saved $500,000, and I could have him go to the sales team and say, how much sales would we have to increase to get $500,000 more profit? That'd be quite a bit. I mean, how, how many Hondas do you have to sell to make $500,000 more? You know, it's got to be a chunk, right? And, and, and your sales team, they'd be upset if you went to one of the regional sales teams and said, you've got to increase your profit by $500,000, not sales, the profit. By they'd hemorrhage. They'd be, we can't do that one year. Forget it, right? When I fly, I fly, I fly over 100,000 miles every year because I fly so much and I always fly with the United. I'm, I'm upgraded 50 to 75 percent of the time. You know who I sit next to in the in the first class section up there? Salespeople, marketing people. You know who should be up there? Safety people. Why? Because you made the company this much money. Okay. When you talk to the management, don't talk about what you saved. Say. We, the safety department delivered $100,000 in profit last year to this corporation. Now you got my attention. By the way, the reason I know that that's the way you want to talk about it is, how many people have been to Las Vegas? Or in the equivalent area, right? When you drive down Las Vegas, how many billboards do you say, do you see that say, save a million dollars? No, it's what? Win a million dollars. Win a new car. It's always that side, not the savings. In our country, how many people, I don't know what it is in Saudi Arabia, but in, in our country here, people do not value saving. 
Okay, having money in a savings account is not as valuable to people as spending money and raising your credit limit, right? We love spending money we don't have. And so therefore, when I talk to somebody about saving, they're not excited about that. But if I talk to you about winning, you know, $100,000, now I've got your attention. That's pretty cool. Management's no different. They're concerned with profit. So when you can show them, hey, this is how much profit we generated for the company. You can go to Boeing and say, listen, we generated this much more profit because our safety performance was that much better. Now what are you looking at? By the way, how do does, how does CEOs and, and corporate leadership think? They think in terms of return on investment. So when you go to them and say, we need to spend $10,000 here, okay? Say, we need to invest, if we invest $10,000 here, we expect that we would get this kind of return on investment. Now these people are going like, okay, now you're talking my language, right? Not number of incidents, not to, to all the different numbers we use and everything else like that. You're talking their world. And by the way, if you're doing better in your safety performance, I hope you're bragging about it. I think too often we don't wave our own flag. I think it's the case for a lot of people. We need to let people know that, hey, you know, we've had an improving safety performance over the past five years. Or maybe you're still at the same point you've been for the past five years. That's not altogether bad. It'd be nice to keep getting better, but if you didn't go up at all, that's still pretty good, right? I mean, sometimes we forget that, hey, staying the same means we weren't hurting people. That's not too bad. So we need to go with it, okay? Don't miss out. Be sure to hit the red button on the lower right and subscribe. That way, every time we release a video, you'll be aware of it.